Okay, so I will um, talk about this question. In topology, uh, in uh, trans transformation groups. How many ways can S1 and SN be A? Here and um, this is if you learn from your very basic topology about uh, covering spaces, uh, you have a given base space, and the classification of all the covering spaces above it is given by the subgroups of the fundamental group. I hope people know this, this classification. Uh, the regular covers correspond to the normal subgroups. Uh, but this is the inverse question. Uh, I start off upstairs with a given space, circle, circle, times SN. So, um, for example, this is S1 times S1 and equal to 1. How many ways can this be covering something? P times. P times. So that the inverse image of each point down here is the number, the, the number of points above here is P. Here, P will be, uh, for today, it will be a prime number. Um, this is actually a pretty hard question. Uh, let me tell you some history. Uh, of course, for the circle, for just the circle, answer is only one way. On the circle, if you say covering five times, there's only one way circle can cover itself five times. E to the power uh, uh, two pi i, sorry, multiply by e to the power two pi i over five. So it's, the answer is easy for just the circle. For just the sphere, the n-dimensional sphere, um, the answer is actually very hard. Um, do you know about uh, lens space? Lens space? Uh, LPQ lens space? So, um, so for the circle, just the circle, you just have one way. And that is, you take um, Z. multiplication in the circle. These all go to the same. Uh, one way up to homotopy or endotopy or um, good question. Um, up to um, Covering space, the equivalence relation between covering spaces is by uh, conjugation. 
So there's a group here. This has a group, the homeomorphism group, self-homeomorphisms. And you can think of this um, generating a subgroup of order P in that topological group. And in that topological group, you can ask, what are these different co um, conjugacy classes? So I, I will talk more details about this. But in the process, it, what you said is right. To get to homeomorphism, you must first go through homotopy and other things to get to homeomorphism. Okay, so for the circle, there is only um, one way. For just more generally, n sphere is many ways. And for example, um, there is um, x goes to um, actually. such ways for these actions. These are actually all the linear actions, the ones that come from um, uh, orthogonal representations. But there are some non-linear uh, actions. So even for um, when the sphere is even dimensional here, uh, there are other actions that are very strange starting in dimension uh, 4, when k, when k is uh, 2. On, on, S, on S4, there is a strange action, topological action, that um, the quotient space has the homotopy type of real projective force space, but is not homeomorphic to it. It's very strange. This quotient space cannot have a smooth structure. 
It's a strange space. It's called a fake, fake projective space. And there are many, many, in higher dimensions, there are many such things. Uh, also, in um, odd dimension, uh, when you have uh, these uh, lens spaces, these things, um, these are the one from the linear actions, but there are non-linear ones also. So um, these were classified by, this is a hard problem in topology in the 1950s, which is to classify all um, p-fold covers of the sphere. Uh, 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 that the sphere is the people cover. And so the answer, uh, the in, there are some invariants, and there are two invariants for these kind of fake, there are fake lens spaces, things that look like this but are not actually this. And the two invariants are called rho invariant, so the fake lens spaces. Case for that, you also need the fact you have to use 
you look at the group ring, This group ring, this uh, real group ring. And this is a f if you have a finite fundamental group, then by uh, Moschke, uh, Moschke's theorem, this is uh, this ring is a direct product of matrix rings uh, over real complex quaternions. Um, and over each one of those pieces, you look at those become corresponds to irreducible representations. Over each one of those pieces, you can look at a signature. So that's called multi-signature. Okay. Anyway, so this is an old story. Uh, I guess how many years? Uh, Forty-five years ago. And these are some invariants. Rademeister torsion mm, is something to do with matrices. <laughs> and um, the coefficients are in, you know, I, I'm not so familiar with Rademeister torsion. I know Whitehead torsion. So ma matrices in these coefficients. And you play some games. If you learn in your linear algebra how to do row operations, you take this row, you add, you know, three times this row to that or this column's minus seven times that. You do these operations and see, can you make it a uh, diagonal matrix? You can't always do this, but you try. And this is something like this, right in my stir portion. Um, this process here to go from these fake lens space to these invariants is called the surgery theory. This was popular maybe 45 years ago. It was developed as a tool to classify. Okay, um, so that's some history about the fake map spaces. That's just the case of, of that. So there, it's not so easy, but it's known. Okay, so now um, I want to study uh, this space. And uh, what makes this space hard uh, compared to this um, process is if you take uh, n greater than 1, this has trivial fundamental group. It's simply connected. And if you have a simply connected space, if you have x um, simply connected, And, and G is some group, and G acts on X freely, then um, you want to classify all such, uh, say G is finite group. Gx on x freely, you want to classify all these different actions. Um, so over there, we were talking about cyclic group of order p acting on s n. Uh, because x is simply connected, the look at the quotient space. Such actions. Bijective correspondence with the x mod g's. So you look at the quotient space and do homeomorphism classification for the possible quotient spaces. This corresponds actually to the classification of such actions up to um, conjugacy, uh, conjugacy in the homeomorphism group, because x is um, simply connected. If you, um, mm, so y, so you 
because
it's more natural if you're teaching uh, topology just to talk about homeomorphisms, homeomorphism. Um, homey conjugacy classes in this of order P subgroups that So this is the more precise question to compute this set. Is the equivalence relation is, is conjugacy in homula. And to find some invariance, what does it mean to say if they're equal? Find Numerical. Just like here, we have some numerical invariants, these two. Okay, then let me um, say the P equals two case is special. This was done. by Yarin in Oslo and Svalomir Klasik um, in the year twenty. So they classify three involutions on S1 times Sn. Um, what came up in their answer were, um, were fake versions of real projective space. But they have the same problem that I do to go this bijective correspondence between the actions upstairs and the homeomorphisms downstairs, there is a problem because um, this is not simply connected. So they have, even for p equals two, there's a problem. Uh, I will talk about that more later. Um, let me give you again. I will write more clearly the examples of actions. Now we have some language. Um, so we have a free, the action is on only the first factor or only the second factor. So you use the right notation. Action on the first factor is this, or identity on the circle. my notation, sorry. And I just need one cube. So, for example, like 
can just put the queue here. classification of lens spaces, these things, is the same as if you just multiply all the cubes, just, just multiply them into one cube. So Q1 times Q2 times to QK, you can put it just here, and then put 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, like this. And this gives you the same homotopy type. So to, uh, for this is homotopy will come uh, as the first step. Actually, the first step is to go to the, to go to the quotient, then to homotopy type, then H cohortism type, and then homeomorphism type. So all these different equivalence relations. Now, what is the answer for uh, P naught two? So. Otherwise, 
Um, this will be a little bit technical. There is a finite two, one surjection. So Want to understand this? Then the dimension of the the um, the n sphere is odd. Okay, so there's always kind of the easy example. This is an easy example where you just do the covering in the first factor. So let's throw that away. We subtract that. What is left? Maybe this is the empty set, maybe not. But actually, no, this is very big. It's infinite. There's infinitely many um, things in this set. And I, there's three steps. Okay, I will tell you the middle step. It looks like this. Since P is odd, odd prime, this makes sense. So this is already an infinite set. This comes from basically the, something like the, uh, the, the multi-signature from representation here. And then there are two finite factors. The first one is the different choices of the Q's. So let me call that Q P K. So this is the equivalence classes of uh, the cubes where Q is equivalent to Q prime means This is a, should be familiar to those of you who know the uh, homeomorphism, diffeomorphism classification of three-dimensional n spaces. If plus or minus plus or minus a to the k power So in um, so when k equals two for a three-dimensional situation, then q is equivalent to plus or minus a squared times q prime. So for example, um, lens space in three dimension three, lens space L five one and L five two. Um, L51 and L52 are not homotopy equivalent because modulo 5, 1 is not plus or minus a squared times 2. But you cannot solve any congruent solution. Modulo 5. Look at the perfect squares modulo 5. There's 1, there's 4, that's it. 2 and 3 are not perfect squares. They're not quadratic residues. So this should be somewhat familiar. Uh, L modulo 7, L71 is homotopy equivalent to 
2L72, but not homeomorphic. So modulo 7, modulo 7, if you have 1 for Q and 2 for Q prime, and K equals 2, um, 2 is a quadratic residue modulo 7, and it's 3 squared, not so you can solve that. Uh, so that means L71 is homotopy equivalent to L72, but they're not homeomorphic. So this is somehow counting the homeomorphism, uh, sorry, it's counting the homotopy types of those lens spaces. This is a finite set. This is an infinite set. And then here, finally, there's one more set. It's a finite set. And uh, this one is kind of very basic number theory, just some equivalence. This thing comes from um, um, row invariance, or multi-signature. I should I say projective row invariance. from uh, surgery theory. And then from this part here, this is more, more number theory. This is the um, ideal class group, the portion of the ideal class group. So, this is So you have this uh, number ring we add the pth root of unity. It's a Dedekind ring, and you can look at its uh, ideal class group. So these are kind of, I think there's two different ways of describing it. Look at all fractional ideals in the field of, in the field of quotients. Um, or you can look at the ideals in this ring um, under multiplication as the addition and the quote you divide out by the principal ideas. So for example, uh, when is this not zero? This is not zero if p equals 20. This is the first time. It's an interesting little group in number theory. And has anyone seen this ideal class group? Uh, this is the defect. It measures how close this is to being a principal ideal domain, which is a you know, Euclidean domain. You can, when can you have a division algorithm? Not when p equals 23. That's bad. Um, okay. So, and what is this notation? I bar, if you have an ideal, it's the complex conjugation. So this is ideal i in this ring. And this ring, you can do complex conjugation. So then you can take i to i bar. So there is a um, involution that takes zeta to zeta inverse. So in complex conjugation. This usual complex conjugation. So what I'm doing here is I'm looking at a quotient of this group. I look at this ideal class group and I divide away um, I basically, I force everything to be equal to its complex conjugate. Now you might ask, okay, this is not zero for p equals 23, but maybe this, but when p equals 23, actually this quotient group is zero. Mm -hmm. 
So when is the first time this is not zero? This is not zero if p equals I can't remember, 29. That's the first time. When p equals 23, uh, this quotient group is zero. At least when p equals 23, this group is um, is in one three. Sacred group of order three. And this complex conjugation takes the generator to its negative. So you take z mod 3 and you make everything equal to its negative, you get 0. But for p equals 29, this group here is uh, the Klein 4 group. It's z mod 2 direct sum z mod 2. And the action is, uh, I think, a trivial action. So you get this will be, uh, anything. this is not 0. Problem. I I fix k, fix k, but I want p to grow big. I want it to go over all the primes. And what is the behavior? Um, now I say this is not um, not a bijection. It's, it's not a, a bijective correspondence. It's almost, but it's. Finite to one. There is some data that's lost. So some points in this list of these, these are the three numerical invariants. Um, some of these triples go to the same point here. Um, but it's not so bad. Uh, as my P increases, I can control how big the the fiber is over each one of these points, each one of the pre-images. It's it's Controlled. I, I can tell you later about that. But it's a very. It, it, it does not grow bigger. It, it's it's bounded. So, for example, in, um, of that theorem, like I said when n equals three, that's the first example. So, um, reactions of the cyclic group of order P on S1 times S3, then it's um, divisible by On the another triple, is it hard to understand that they give the same representation, the same action? Uh, yes, a little bit hard because it's not simply looking at the numbers. It's um, there is some choices that are made. 
in this process. This is a process that assembles this and this and this. We have to make some choice. But it is, it, it, can you say that this is a constructive algorithm? So there is some way to precisely... There is a constructive algorithm for this. This is very constructive. But to decide if they are um, the same point, uh, I think is not constructive. Be it requires some topology. Because there are some topological choices, like even here, this is a simple choice, we can choose a base point here. But there are more complicated choices in, in this process. Um, and I try it to, um, there are some, so in topology, when you have a choice, you, you, you first make a choice. Like you're talking about fundamental group, you choose a base point, for example. And then you try to get rid of that. And in, uh, you could look at the resulting um, group up to um, isomorphism, for example. You try to get rid of that choice. So I tried to get rid of the choices that were made, and I got rid of um, many of them. But in, uh, in this case, I could not get rid of 16 of them. So there's like, um, the number of choices depends on P, and it grows um, large. So there's some uh, group of, you, know, you have these lens spaces, and the problem is in this, in this is if you look at S1 times LPQ, this self-equivalences, self-homotopy equivalences. Um, I write it this way. Each. Um, so in, in uh, surfaces, we study surfaces. Uh, you have you heard of the mapping class group for surfaces? Yes. Sir. So you have uh, the surface, and you have the diffeomorphisms of that surface, and then you divide out by the subgroup of the things that are isotopic to the identity. This is kind of like a joke, actually, but this is the self-homotopy equivalences. This is homotopy version. Self-homotopy equivalences of this, but then you divide by the ones that are homotopic to the identity. Homotopy equivalence is up to homotopy. Uh, instead of diffeomorphisms up to isotopy. Different song. I put H mod for that. So this is the problem, and this thing has quadratic growth. If you let um, in P. If, you P, if if P goes to all the prime numbers, this will, this grows very big. And I use this self-equivalence to kind of get rid of my choices, kind of, kind of rub them out. And in the very last step here, I try to get rid of a choice. And so um, I can divide out by some subgroup with some generators I know in here, but there's still some mystery, and the mystery part uh, in, in this case is, is 16. So, um, it can be worse. <laughs> it, can be, it can be worse, but I work hard and I get rid of uh, most of it. All that is left has bounded growth. It's just some constant. So in this case, constant is just 16. It does not change with P. But to get that, I have to work hard. I have to divide by the action of self-equivalences um, that grow quadratically in P. So the, it's not a um, The decision to know if one triple is uh, giving the equivalent to another triple is not algorithmic, but um, it's at least in a bounded, bounded space of choices, a finite search space.
Okay, so let me give an outline for the um, proof. The first problem is this problem here, because I don't have so many magic scales. So, um, there are four steps to, um, to, under, to do this calculation. And you might say, well, you only see three here. But the first step number zero is actually to do this correspondence. Okay, so it will turn out in my example, S1 times Sn, there is such a bijective correspondence. Okay, but you cannot necessarily lift homeomorphism this way. If there exists a homeomorphism, then there exists some other lift of some other homeomorphism. So I have to sacrifice this homeomorphism. I might have to use another homeomorphism. So this may be a bad homeomorphism down here. It will not lift. Uh, why? For example, uh, the quotient space can be uh, quotient space. Quotient space can be this. For example, just action on the, for example, when you have this, identity on the circle times phi q gives you this quotient space. Um, and so, there you have z times z mod p for the quotient space. And you could have a map like this on the fundamental groups that does something bad. S1 times Sn as fundamental group Z. You have homomorphisms. This is the homomorphism that you know, takes this to this comma zero. Um, T goes to one goes to zero. One goes to one. Okay, standard maps. But here you can have you can have a strange map. You could have um, deep. You could have one comma zero go to one comma one. Now maybe you see the problem this lifting problem. Because now one goes to one comma one. But that element is not in the subgroup generated here. It's not in the image here. This is bad. You cannot lift it. But the way um, Yarin and Kwasik and myself fix the problem is, okay, all we actually care about there is there exists homeomorphism. So our strategy is you find some homeomorphism, maybe it's a bad homeomorphism. Okay? But we're going to do something like a Dane twist. Like you look at homeomorphisms of surfaces. Sometimes it's bad. Yet if somebody's it's like a Dane twist. You twist into the this thing. So what we what do we do? We find some self-homeomorphism here to itself that twists it back the other way. And then we look at the composite. And that will take one zero to one zero, and then that will lift. So sometimes you have to fix the problem. You have to fix it the other way. Okay, so that's, let me tell you some details. So, step number zero is that this set is still true, but it's harder to show. Okay, this set corresponds to homeomorphism classes of quotient space. So the map from this set to this set is just take the quotient. When you say, 
these classes of caution space, you mean caution space by free group, by, by free by actions, the, yes, by free by, actions. By the, by the uh, free action of uh, Z mod P on this space. Yes, so yes. here you mean only free factors. Yes, a uh, caution space. Um, um, So this mapping here is given by take the quotient, and it will be a surjective mapping. It's onto, by definition, basically. But is it injective? Is it one to one? And that question is basically this. This question. So let me re rewrite that. If you have two actions here, if they go to the same point here, then they should be equivalent here. So you know, the first action gives you, these are three actions. So we divide by three action on a manifold, you get a manifold. This is a manifold. So we have to divide by some action, gamma prime. Divide by gamma. And so maybe you have two actions, gamma and gamma prime, that we take the quotient, they are the same point here. Meaning these are equivalence classes, they are homeomorphic. So there's a homeomorphism H. And you want to know, because there exists a lift H hat. And answer is no in general because of what I said there with the fundamental group. You cannot lift. But you can you can take this and it does something back here, you can twist it. So I can yeah. say so the question is about so you have in the in this quotients you have a subgroup as uh, to z which is the image and the question whether these groups the, these subgroups are conjugate is it the same well, as the conjugacy classes or yes yes the question about yes that's right the, and to, to, to know their conjugate means uh, for the one action to be conjugate to the other means that there is a uh, homeomorphism h hat that's equivariant mm -hmm. with the action gamma here, prime here and gamma here. So you, you, you need the, the images should be the same. So this yes. one here should put this group into this, this group. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And this one is bad. So this is the first difficulty. Uh, but may I ask you one mm -hmm. more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this group, the fundamental group of, of these quotients, you can you can describe the fundamental yes, group. Yes, yes, yes. So I'll, I will tell you that uh -huh. in a second. It, that's the very first thing to understand. Yes, but this is difficult. With difficult with injectivity. Problem. Um, the, the fundamental groups you can have the fundamental groups for the n or m prime are um, z. This can happen when you have uh, this action. We divide by this action, you get uh, a small circle. You get a small circle in this factor, and nothing happened here. So S1 times Sn. Or you can have just simply Z times C mod P. When P is odd. When P is 2, there's a problem. There's, there's one more group, it's called the infinite dihedral group. I don't know if you've heard of this group. It's a Z 
semi-direct product of ZMod2, or ZMod2 free product of ZMod2. Uh, but with P odd, there is no action of ZMod P on Z. So it's a, you can use some um, cohomology of groups or something to, to show this, the, the possible extensions. And so, so the question is just to, to describe the elements of, of infinite order in this in these groups, yeah? Because the element yes. of infinite order is the image of right. So you can have things of infinite order which are one comma Some. two or one comma zero. You don't know. So you want to the way to fix this. So there are. Subgroups of order P in in uh, index P. In, in these possibilities. Sorry, P subgroups of index P in G. And uh, so it becomes a group theory question. Can you take one subgroup to another subgroup? For example, can I take one comma one to one comma zero? Yes. And so the the outer automorphism group. Acts transitively. On the on the, groups, on the, on the just on the fundamental uh, on the the subgroups of, of, see, of the, next group. the the image of this is a covering space, so the image of this in here is going to be a subgroup. And it will be a subgroup of index P, which is a P full cover. So you want to know what are all the possible subgroups, as you were asking. And in the case where this is the quotient is this, it's just an elementary exercise, there's only P such subgroups. And furthermore, you can carry one to the other with by um, um, automorphisms of the fundamental group. Now, actually what you really want is not only that, but automorphisms of the space. That so, but this is the first step. You have the first message is a necessary condition. So this is a good answer. Uh, it's hard. Um, to realize. These. automorphisms. I one, but can be done uh, with the homeomorphism, like with the self homeomorphism. But um, can be done using something called um, algebraic surgery theory. So there's a version of the classical surgery theory from the 1970s that was developed by Andrew Raditsky. Uh, and I used that to help to solve this problem. I can find some self-homeomorphisms of M that carry any, any um, subgroup of index P to kind of the standard subgroup of index P. But that took a very long time to figure out. It's not easy. I had to use some very deep facts about manifolds, Poincaré duality. I had to work in a topological category. I had to work with homeomorphisms and not diffeomorphisms. I don't know the answer in the diffeomorphism case. 
But basically, this, this answer here gives you like a ding twist that will twist it back the other way. You compose it, then you can lift. So that, it solves that problem. But that's, uh, okay, so there is such a correspondence. The next step, so then I have those three numerical invariants there. Where do they come from? Now we are working with the quotient space. So we're trying to look at the homeomorphism types of the quotient space. And this is now a classical surgery problem. So a classical surgery problem, first you need to count what are the homotopy types of the quotient space, number one. Then, um, okay, then you would like to go from homotopy type uh, to homeomorphism type. But there's a little bit of a problem. That problem is algebraic K-theory. So you have to deal with this somehow. And this classical surgery theory is called the deparation. So the way I deal with it geometrically is I go from homotopy equivalence to H cobordism. Do you know what H cobordism? Cobordism? You know cobordism? Yes. Cobordism is if two manifolds is their boundary, they're the boundary of some other manifold. Uh, H cobordism, I will tell you later, is when the inclusion is a homotopy equivalence. So um, I'll tell you later. So let me just write this down. Step. Classify the homotopy types of quotient and the answer is either S1 times Sn so this is kind of a stupid answer, because this is just coming from here. It's just wrapping in a circle. You're doing nothing interesting in the sphere. OK. Um, or here's the more interesting answer, S1 times LPQ. Um, when this is a lens space of dimension 2 k minus 1. But this only occurs when the sphere is of odd dimension. So when the sphere is of even dimension, we get this. This is kind of an like easy answer. Uh, don't worry about anything. Else. That's an easy case. But when n is even, there are no lens spaces of that. You know, there's no lens space of dimension four or dimension six. Only of dimension three, of dimension five, dimension seven. So that, this part of the answer will come from this first step. This kind of rigid, what they call rigidity, topological rigidity. Um, okay, so I won't go through the details of why uh, this is true. Uh, I use some facts about lens spaces and um, I don't know, some basic topology. So I'm, I'm focusing on the, the harder parts. This is, I can show you my paper, it's on the archive, you're gonna see why these are only two possibilities. It's not just two, it's one, and then, you know, P minus one choices here. And maybe a total of P choices. P homotopy types. So let me give you some notation. is a topological space, I can, let me call this M of X, M top of top. Okay, so this will represent, it's just a way to, to give a, a name to this. This will be all the closed manifolds Topological manifolds um, homotopy equivalent to 
to x. But um, there's a problem if I just write that. This is not a set, it's a proper class. Here's some set theoretic difficulties. You must give some equivalence relation. So the equivalence relation is up to homeomorphism. And um, I will put some strange thing here. Maybe you won't like it. This for people who know about surgery, this means something. Otherwise, you can ignore that. So after you believe step one, say that's done, then you want to compute um, these, what I call, or you can call this a moduli set, or whatever you want to call it, manifold set, moduli set. Um, if you compute this for S1 times Sn, you get just one equivalence class. So this is topologically rigid. Any manifold that is homotopy equivalent to it is homeomorphic to it. You probably know a version of this already. It's called the generalized Poincaré conjecture. Any closed manifold homotopy equivalent to a sphere is homeomorphic to a sphere. Uh, that's in all dimensions. In dimension three, if it's simply connected to a manifold, it must be homeomorphic to the three sphere. The fundamental group is good, on, good enough in dimension three. But in general, any closed manifold, compact manifold without boundary that has the homotopy type of a sphere must be homeomorphic to it. So that's the case when only this, that's topological rigidity for the sphere as a special name. But this also is topologically rigid. Uh, that's a su basic surgery calculation. So this, this is kind of boring. This, is, um, this, this answer here corresponds to this answer here. Uh, what about, okay, so what about calculating A? In terms of this language, This corresponds to this <coughs> This is just a single point. And when n is even, there is nothing more to say. Because when n is even, there is no length space. So nothing if n equals 1 or n is equal. When n is odd, the homotopy types fall into p possibility, into p different possibilities. One here, homotopy type, and the other ones are these. Choice. So I'm going to give another name. 
and S time N of X. It's almost the same thing as M, except it's going to be the um, the pairs M closed manifolds M along with the homotopy equivalent F. So I choose a homotopy equivalent, I equip it, so I can um, surface theory to all marked points. You have, you're tracking the movement of something. So I'm actually making a choice of homotopy equivalents. And I look at these things up to homeomorphism in the sense that if I have M, F, F, M prime, F prime, that there would be some um, homeomorphism H that when you do this triangle, this is maybe not commutative, but commutative up to homotopy. Mm -hmm. Because homotopy equivalency only up to homotopy anyway. So this is the equivalent simulation here. And so this is the relationship between these two is this is a quotient. Where if you have two different choices for f, this and some f prime, then you can do f the inverse of one and come back. You have a self-equivalence of x, and that gives you a left action. You divide by that left action, you just get you get rid of the the f. So my time is short. My time is up. Uh, can I have just a few more minutes? Or a few, maybe a few minutes. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, okay. So when I was talking about this error here, this finite to one error, it comes from dividing by this action. I divide by most of the action, there's just a little bit left that I could not divide by. So now I'm going to calculate the, this is called the structure set. This is called maybe the moduli set. So the different choices of these Q's correspond to, actually, actually this is wrong, this should be the Q's in, um, in here. So this is the equivalence relation that came from the first factor. The other two factors, let me just tell you where they come from. This is now the home, we finished the homotopy classification. Then I decided to go to H cobordism classification. So this structure set has, I said there's a left action 
by self equivalence is here is also a right action by the possible H cobordisms. And Milner showed uh, that the H cobordisms in high dimensions correspond to something called the Whitehead group. This is some kind of group of matrices up to elementary row and column operations. It depends on the fundamental group. When this fundamental group is trivial, this group is zero. The Whitehead group, the first Whitehead group that's not trivial is cyclic group of order five. There the answer is Z. That corresponds to a number of theories that correspond to uh, a lattice of, of rank of that rank P minus um, three over two. So if P equals five, we get rank one. Um, okay, let me just skip that. I'll just jump to the end. Step three. So this thing, this thing here, um, quotient space. of this action is um, given by multi-signature. It has to do with the, the representations. Um, for pi one equals sigma group of order p. There, you know, look at the uh, real representations. So there's there's uh, of the non-trivial ones, there's p minus one over two of them. That's where that is coming from. And then step three is to understand that left action. like that ideal class group here. Um, this action here, on, of this group on this set is not a free action, but uh, the stabilizer, the isotropic groups I calculate, they're geometrically given by something called strongly inertial h cobordisms I don't have time to talk about it today, but you have to divide by that. So the fiber will be the group divided by the the, the kernel by the stabilizers, and that's the strongly inertial h cobordisms and the strongly inertial ones um, correspond to, um, to to the to that complex conjugation. That's where that answer is coming from. Okay, thank you for all your time. Thank you very much. Questions? So let me let me ask. So, in the uh, you say that the inverse image of every conjugacy classes of action is is finite. It's finite. This map is finite to one. Yes. So this means that the set of homotopy self equivalence of that set H mod X is finite. Mm, no. Well, because of how okay. In the case of of this, of this, of in, in that in the space S one multiplied by length space. Yes. yes. For for length spaces, it is fine. Yes, it's. So S one, and you're asking about this. No. And this is where from finite to one the, the condition appears from this. Yes. 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 So let, let me say a little bit more about that calculation. But just just in general to understand what why where the finiteness condition yes. appears. So this yes. this is the finite. So we can replace the set of that the union of over Q replaced by S top. And then that S top can be represented as a 
Uh, is it Walton by Whitehead group? Yes. So this is all, there's no choice. This is exact. What's not exact is, so this is, um, so this is uh, the space of mappings of the lens space, in the lens space, the space of the topolo this is a topological monoid of continuous self-mappings of Just the lens space. Mm -hmm. This has a base point, a dandy map. With respect to that base point, you look at the fundamental group. This just corresponds to um, um, isotopies of mappings. Uh, but because it's invertible, it's isotopy classes of, home of self homeomorphisms. The things that are that are homeomorphic, things that are isotopic to identity. Mm -hmm. and you actually you choose that uh, isotopy, and it's this thing, semi-direct product. Um, this thing is uh, Z mod 2, the identity map or the complex contribution of the circle, that's degree negative 1. And, and the self equivalence is there. Um, Okay, so there's that calculation, and you're asking where does this um, indeterminacy come from? So this thing is this thing is hard for a length space of, of you know who knows this thing. But is this, is, but this is finite. This set is finite. This side, this side is finite. And this then you pick p one of of maps of length space also finite. This, this one, yeah, this one is z mod. Uh, this is order p squared. So that's where that quadratic growth part comes from. But anyway, uh, it's either z mod p squared or Z mod P times Z mod P depends, but anyway, there are explicit generators. Wu um, Chang Shang and Bjorn um, Bjorn figured this out in the 1980s. So explicit generators here, explicit generators here. Who knows what this is? Uh, I get some kind of control on this, but this is very you know connection to number theory and the lens spaces. The lens spaces have a very specific CW structure, but still it's it's hard to figure out. That's where the mystery comes really in here. Okay. Any other question? Well, let us understand. Thank you very much.